Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. We've had a letter from the chairman from Chris Roberts talking about plans for 2023, features and struggles of the project, as well as the milestones that it's achieved. Let's jump into the letter. As we close out 2022 and head into 2023, I wanted to take some time to thank everyone for being such an amazing, enthusiastic and supportive community. The not-so-secret source of Cloud Imperium's ability to have the time and resources to build a universe of the detail, scale, and scope of Star Citizen is the community's full-throated embrace of the ultimate goal of a fully connected and simulated science fiction universe that allows players to engage in first-person gameplay and adventures almost without boundaries. There is no other way Star Citizen could be built except for the community-driven funding model. The investment both in time and money is just too expensive for a normal game publisher, especially a public one beholden to quarterly earnings reports and shareholders. A great example of our ability to take the long-term view and invest in research and development that most projects don't have the time or ambition for is Persistent Entity Streaming, PES, which creates true lasting persistence for the Star Citizen universe. If you leave equipment in a remote cave, shoot down a bounty over Daymar, manage to fend off some pirates around Yella, the results of your actions will persist. Items, debris, ships, even dead bodies will all stay where they were left and still be there if you log off and return a week later, assuming other players haven't taken or cleaned up the results of your adventures. To do this for a universe as big and detailed as Star Citizen, to have this apply to everything, not just player-owned items, for a MMO with millions of players is a major technical accomplishment. I am not aware of any other large-scale MMO that has tried to deliver this level of persistence. Persistent Entity Streaming is the headline feature of Star Citizen Alpha 3.18, and while we didn't manage to release to live before the end of 2022, it is currently in Wave 1 of the PTU, the Public Test Universe, the testbed wherein we harden patches with the community's help before we deem the patch stable enough for live release. And there we already have lots of community videos and posts about the emergent gameplay that is enabled by Persistent Entity Streaming, especially when combined with some of the other 3.18 features such as Salvage and Soft Death, where the ship doesn't blow up into pieces but instead becomes disabled, allowing players to survive a once fatal event and attackers to board and potentially loot the disabled ship. PEZ is an example of how all your support has enabled Star Citizen to expand its boundaries and possibilities, but the community's contribution goes much further than funding Star Citizen's development, as contributing ideas, giving feedback and testing the various updates we release are all part of the symbiotic relationship between Cloud Imperium and the Star Citizen community. There are plenty of features and content that I and the development team dream up, but there are equally many things that come from you, the community. The development of Star Citizen is a fusion of the development team and the community playing it. Ideas are passed back and forth, made better, released, tested and iterated on. Some of the recent racetracks that debuted in 3.17.2 and now in 3.18 are the results of the community finding interesting areas to race around, which in turn inspired developers to flesh them out and start to add time trial functionality to the ship HUDs. This is just one example. There are too many others to list in detail. As this same dynamic happens with everything in Star Citizen, your actions in the verse inspire the Star Citizen team to improve and push boundaries even further. And what is even more exciting is that the community grows larger each year. More and more people discover Star Citizen through friends, online videos, or people streaming their gameplay and are intrigued and jump into the verse. In my letter from the chairman in May of this year, I mentioned just how strongly we started 2022 in terms of new players joining the verse. This trend has continued throughout the rest of the year, fueled by Invictus Launch Week, and then continued with the release of Star Citizen Alpha 3.17.2, which should really have been numbered as a full patch due to the number of features and content and optimizations that we put in, knowing that Alpha 3.18 was going to take extra time due to the complexity of persistent entity streaming. The biggest headline of 3.17.2 was the increase of server capacity from 50 to over 100 players. Just like to mention there, that was not an intended feature of 3.17.2. That was a side effect of them testing it and going, oh, actually, it kind of works. They even said when they were testing it, we're probably not going to enable this. Anyway, back to what Chris was saying, which was enabled by the ongoing multi-threaded and optimization work the engine and gameplay teams had already been working on in the background. This enabled a more active and busier persistent universe for players and allowed some truly spectacular player-driven events like 100 person plus 
uh, fleet battles or ship meets. In November, we released 3.17.4, just in time for the 2952 edition of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, which debuted two new flyable ships in the Drake Cutter and the Corsair, as well as the RSI Galaxy, a large modular multi-role ship that has been added to the ship production pipeline and a playable nifty off-roll vehicle, the Grey Cat Sports Terrain Vehicle, STV. We also added servers in Hong Kong for our exploding player base in Asia Pacific. All of this combined with the return of Jump Town and our other dynamic events like Xenothreat and the Nine Towers Lockdown kept the verse more engaged and active than any year previously. Another record-breaking year of growth. While our most passionate players test 3.18 in PTU and our developers take a well-deserved break, I wanted to share with you some of the truly monumental stats from this year that illustrate the Star Citizen has had its best year yet and across some historic milestones that demonstrate this game with all the love is finally breaking into the larger gaming consciousness with a success that is much greater and faster than we had anticipated. This year, over a million unique players logged into Star Citizen and played our game, and they did so for more than 46 million hours. Our daily active users, DAU, this year, i.e. unique players logging in each day, has grown 50% over last year and is double what it was at the end of 2019. This year, we are averaging over 240,000 monthly active users, which is 33% higher than our average monthly active users from last year, with highs of over 400,000 during May with this year's Invictus launch week. Those of you who follow our funding tracker doubtless know that we already had eclipsed all of last year's revenues by mid-November, and we have our first $100 million plus year ever, and by a fair margin. You can also read a more in-depth report of our 2021 financials here, so they have been released now. But as great as 2021 was, which was remarkable for growing beyond the COVID-bolstered revenues of 2020, we managed to grow 30 percent beyond 2021. Where does that revenue all go? Right back into development as we've hired more than ever before and continue to build out our Squadron 42 and Persistent Universe teams. It's no secret that our two games and our technology are among the most complex and complicated endeavors in the gaming and even tech industry. We're doing things with our engine that are truly groundbreaking and it takes talent and time to achieve ambitious goals we've set for ourselves. And even so, as we grow, we invest all the growth back into our teams through hiring and retaining our critical talent. A huge portion of our growing revenue has come exclusively from new players that only joined Star Citizen this year. In fact, this year we witnessed truly explosive growth. Over 800,000 new accounts were created this year to follow or play our project. Our new players this year have almost doubled this year compared to last year, with over half a million new players joining us during free flies, dynamic events, and throughout 2022. And of those new players this year, over 70% of them have stayed around as paying players who purchase starter packs to get access to the Star Citizen Alpha to keep their adventures going in the verse. Throughout 2022, members of our team had the opportunity to attend various Bar Citizen events around the globe. We're grateful for the chance to connect with all of you at these events, especially those of you who are further from our offices. The past few years during the pandemic have reminded us of the importance and significance of in-person events, and there is nothing quite like the energy and excitement of a Bar Citizen. Seeing and experiencing your passion and support in person energizes us for the work ahead. We have always been inspired by creativity and the camaraderie at these events, and we believe that they will continue to be the highlight of our community for years to come. For this reason, and many more, I'm happy to share that we plan to continue this initiative into 2023. Our community team is always interested in learning about upcoming events in your area, so be sure to share your events on Spectrum. And in case you missed it, Sandy Roberts also recently announced that in-person CitizenCon will be returning in 2023 in Los Angeles. We are looking forward to seeing you all there for a day of celebrating the Star Citizen universe with fellow community members. We'll share more information as we have it, so stay tuned for more details on the event new places to call home. In my last letter, we shared some early imagery of our Manchester and Frankfurt offices that were previously under construction. I'm happy to report we've now moved into both offices, Frankfurt at the end of August and Manchester in mid-October. Having our staff together in the office makes a huge difference to our teamwork. We've struggled at times to hit our goals for 2022, and while we always achieve incredible things at Cloud Imperium Games, I have personally seen a significant change in pace towards the end of the year resulting from most of us being in the office, which we were finally able to achieve once our two new offices in Frankfurt and Manchester were ready to be occupied. The huge new offices in downtown Manchester were especially important as we had grown way beyond 
beyond the capacity of our old Wimslow office during the pandemic, and so could not properly return to the office until we had the extra space. Now that our teams have moved back in, we're especially eager to give you all a tour of the new facilities. We plan to do this in the coming months as we wrap up the final touches on the facility. You can expect a video tour alongside a return of periodic studio tours for those looking to visit us in person, and of course, with limited capacity when available. That is what I'm looking forward to. I want another office door. Clan Imperium, give me office door. Um, we also are planning on opening our doors for a couple of fun in-house events for our concierge and subscribers. Stay tuned for more information on that in the new year. Star Citizen Alpha 3.18. Last week, we opened the gates and welcomed Wave 1 testers to check out the latest content and technologies in Star Citizen Alpha 3.18. This upcoming patch release marks a giant technical leap forward on Star Citizen's journey to deliver an uncompromising and near limitless universe that we've all been dreaming of. Far from our technical quarterly patch, this release introduces fundamental changes to our entire backend, bringing an all new set of backend services, granting universal persistence and even the mass migration of the entire game state into the cloud which is a tremendous undertaking and accomplishment for our teams since hitting wave one tens of thousands of you have dived into the experience the long-awaited salvage profession an entirely new economic and non-combat career path for pilots in the verse the ability to salvage will allow pilots to retrieve valuable materials from target ships and sell them for profit the new salvage profession is supported through the addition of new technology and tools including a complete cargo refactor giving cargo a physical representation in game alpha 3.18 also includes the release of the drake interplanetary vulture a new entry level flyable salvage ship in the drake lineup of vessels perfect for pilots beginning their career in salvage alongside updated functionality so reclaimer pilots can finally utilize their behemoth of a ship while salvage, new racetracks, new points of interest, and some other visually stimulating mechanics will take the spotlight, the largest change to our universe comes from the powerful work under the hood with persistent entity streaming. With this new tech, all physical objects moved or placed by players will dynamically be tracked on the server. They were moved on and remain in their new locations. Persistent entity streaming represents the largest technical update in the game's history and is a critical addition in laying the foundation for future technology and full in-game persistence that will unlock a new level of immersion in the verse. As we move towards making 3.18 stable enough to release to the live service, I'd like to give a special shout out to everyone that's been testing 3.18 so far on the public test servers, especially for our dedicated Eva Cardi group, who put in many hard hours in the, the patch when it was in its roughest and most frustrating state. Thanks to your efforts, we've been able to iterate in real time and implement improvements and fixes quicker than ever. So now we're moving into the more juicy bits. Looking forward, the road to Alpha 4.0. This coming year is going to be a huge one for Star Citizen, possibly its biggest one to date. The first order of business is to continue to stabilize Alpha 3.18 so we can release to the live servers in January once the team is back from their well earned holiday break. Then we will continue to harden persistent entity streaming, improving aspects and adding some additional quality of life features including the ability to choose which persistent entity streaming shard you would like to join. The current game servers, Pez Shard Matchmaking, tries to match you to the last Pez Shard that you were in when you log back in or recover from a crash. But if that shard is full, it places you in a different one. But in the short term, before server meshing makes this not so necessary, we also want to give players the choice to wait in queue for their preferred shard if it is full. That is fantastic. Um, the next step will be to separate the replication layer RL, the in-memory cache that remembers all dynamic object states from the game server, and have scalable replication layer workers that communicate the state changes between the various game client servers and the replication layer. This is very important for server meshing as the universal state needs to be fully decoupled from server state. It also will make Star Citizen much more crash resilient on the client side as a server crash will no longer take down the replication layer as well, meaning that clients can stay connected while the new server takes over where the last one left off. It will also have the added benefit of having the view every client has of the universe around it be a little more fluid with less lag as clients updates and refresh of the object state will no longer be tied to the tick rate of the game server this means players will see state changes from other remote clients and game servers as they happen at the rates the various clients and servers push them once this happens we'll be able to have multiple game servers communicate with the replication layer much like multiple game clients communicate right now with the replication layer 
allowing Star Citizen to have multiple servers simulating the universe state which we call server meshing. We will start with static server meshing, where different servers are assigned to simulate different entity zones in a star system. Entity zones, sometimes referred to as local grids, are separate simulation areas. The inside of a spaceship is a different zone from the space around which a spaceship flies. A planet is a different zone than the star system zone where all the planets and moons exist in, and a landing zone can be in a different zone nested inside the planet zone, nested inside the star system zone. At first, the servers will be bound to fixed zones, but we will quickly move to dynamic server meshing, version 1, where we will assign servers dynamically to entity zones based on gameplay and simulation load. This will be a much more efficient use of servers in the cloud, as you only need servers where players are, whereas the static server meshing, you'll have servers assigned to zones, even if there are no players there. Dynamic Server Meshing version 2 will take this dynamic assignment of servers one step further by subdividing entity zones into simulation islands. This is organizing the dynamic objects in one zone or local grid into different groups based on which objects can interact, collide with each other, all that sort of jazz. Allowing these islands to be distributed between servers to again help balance simulation load. At this point, we should be able to handle tens of thousands of players all playing in the same persistent entity streaming universe shard, bringing Star Citizen much closer to the ultimate goal of having a huge living universe densely populated with players and AI. Once we have achieved static server meshing, we can open up the universe of Star Citizen to other star systems, starting with Pyro. By having authority pass from one server to another, you'll be able to transition seamlessly without the need to log out of the game between star systems. We are aiming to put static server meshing and Pyro into the hands of players in the fourth quarter of 2023. The large caveat with this goal is that complicated engineering work that involves a completely new paradigm, requires a host of new backend services and technology is hard to estimate and schedule accurately as the issues and problems that can come up along the way are hard to foresee as no one has implemented this system before. The plans rarely survive contact with the users, especially at scale. This has been true for persistent entity streaming as it is no secret that we were hoping to have Alpha 3.18 and persistent entity streaming released to live by the end of the year as opposed to just the PTU. Delays in finalizing 3.18 and persistent entity streaming impact the team's ability to start on the next stage and we still have the unknowns of how persistent entity streaming performs after months of heavy load and people seeing exactly how much space junk they can leave around. Beyond this, there are a host of other exciting features and content we have planned for 2023. Pyro with its assorted planets, moons and settlements, space stations and assorted factions and AI population being the headline, but we also will be rolling out the new item resource system in ships which replaces the old pipeline system with a much more dynamic and scalable system to allow for truly emergent behavior. In fact, elements of this new system can already be seen in 3.18 in the salvage gameplay. Bounty hunting with a full tracking system and the ability to actively restrain and transport both players and AI. Persistent hangers with freight elevators allowing you to call up stored inventory or place things in storage. Towards the end of the year, we should see some more of the Squadron 42 related work arrive in Star Citizen, more flexible player traversal, especially on ladders and ledges, a greatly improved interaction system, FPS scanning, the new star map, MFDs using the more performant and flexible building blocks UI system, and much deeper AI combat. Now, that Gen 12 renderer is functioning in 3.18. The graphics team will work on multi-threaded improvements and optimizations for the renderer, as well as hooking up the Vulkan graphics API to it to unlock some of the performance gains that the Gen 12 renderer can provide. There are numerous more things the Star Citizen team are working on for the coming year, but this letter is already long enough. Final thoughts. Looking back on 2022 has been gratifying to see Cloud Imperium and Star Citizen's community grow. We ended the year with 861 employees and the community grew to more than 4 million accounts and 1.8 million backers, accounts that have purchased Star Citizen. We achieved a lot this year, including our moves into two wonderful homes for most of our staff. We fell short on a few others, like having 3.18 and persistent entity streaming alive before the end of the year, but this is the nature of game development that tries to boldly go when no game has gone before. What has been especially great to see is just how much 
more time people are spending playing Star Citizen this year. This had a lot to do with the increased player count and proof stability, but also Star Citizen, even in its alpha state, is already feature and content rich with a number of things to do with your friends or solo, and this list grows larger and larger with every patch. The universe and how you interact with it is up to you, from exploring to hauling, trading, mining, salvage, refueling, refining, bounty hunting, piracy, to being a hired gun, to just sightseeing and being a social butterfly and that is just what we have now in the future you'll be able to farm or gather other resources build craft and sell the universe of star citizen is a huge sandbox for everyone to play in and i couldn't be more excited by what the future holds star citizen is more than just a game it is an escape to another reality where anyone can pursue their imagination not bound to a single play style or profession where they can interact with other players that share in the same common dream i feel incredibly lucky and privileged to have the opportunity to pursue this dream with the amazingly talented team at clan imperium and the support and patience of the best community in gaming the star citizen community from all of us at clan imperium we wish you all a happy new year and can't wait to continue the journey with you in 2023 Woo! that was a meaty letter of information obviously Obviously, um, I am very excited for Cloud Imperium attempting to get Pyro and server meshing Alpha 4.0 in by the end of 2023. And it's nice to have seen that I was like 95% accurate with my expectations for 2023 with bounty hunting and AI improvements and uh, sort of the animation and character improvements that they've got going on beyond pyro and all that sort of jazz really looking forward to the resource management system really looking forward to sort of enhanced and evolved bounty hunting that's going to be absolutely fantastic to see but just with that letter this video is now too long i'd love to know what you think what are you excited about in 2023 what do you think about chris um, talking about um the sort of milestones throughout 2022 and plans for the next year do you think they're going to hit 4.0 by the end of um, 2023 or do you think it's going to be delayed whatever your thoughts i'd love to hear from you in the comments below do you have eyes i know i do do you want precise eye and head tracking that's natively supported in star citizen for that deep immersion and it just so happens that toby eye tracker 5 has a 20 percent off sale until the 2nd of january 2023 so go to toby.gg slash board gamer or follow the links down below to get your discount Ho, ho, ho. Merry Nordmus. It's Santa. No, Timmy. It's Father Nordmus. I'm legally distinct and spread NordVPN cheer. Here you go, little Tim. Have some discount on your next NordVPN purchase. Just what you wanted. Go to nordvpn.com slash board gamer. But Santa, we don't want a VPN. I told you, Tim. It's Father Nordmus. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For December, we are giving away the mighty Drake Corsair Explorer with a Star Citizen game package and lifetime insurance. This no-nonsense explorer can take you and three friends to the limits of adventure around the verse. And although more focused on exploration and expedition, it is a great multi-role mission runner too. Comment on any of my videos during December to be in for a chance of winning that. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Please don't forget to like and especially subscribe to the videos. Leave comments and if you feel so inclined, use the join button under my videos and give a little bit each month to help the channel. It really, really does help. Or you can even become a Patreon or donate. Check out all the links below. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great time in the verse.